Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Jonathan Allen at Floodwater. Tonight, there's some sickness in my house, so Eli's not with us, but we wanted to do this quick video for you guys because the holiday season is upon us, and for those of you who have musicians in your lives, um, we know they can be hard to shop for sometimes. So this is the Floodwater Christmas Guide for Musicians. Let's get into it. Like I said, tonight we want to go over a couple simple things here. Really, we, we broke it down into categories. Uh, so the first category we want to talk about is the beginner. So somebody who's wanting to get into recording, uh, just the basic needs that they'll have for that. And the cool thing is, you know, everything that we're going to talk about tonight, I'm going to have links down in the description. So you'll be able to get to things pretty easily. If you like the price, pick it up. They are uh, affiliate links, just so you guys are aware. That's marked down there as well. Uh, so the first thing for the beginner we want to talk about uh, is they're going to need an interface, they're going to need a microphone, they're going to need some cables, they're going to need a mic stand, and probably some headphones so they can hear themselves while they're recording. The good thing is all of that's thrown into one bundle. And we actually, we picked the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 bundle for this. Now the, the awesome thing is Eli and I both have this. That's how we started also. I actually still use mine um, in the studio, and I'll show a little bit more on that later too as we get down further into the list. But this is going to get you USB right into the computer. Caveat, you will need a computer. So hopefully your musician has one. If not, maybe that's their big gift, and then they can kind of build from there. Um, but... This bundle, you're going to need a computer to hook it up to, USB interface for everything, two uh, inputs on the interface. So you're going to have both of them can either hold XLR inputs or quarter inch instrument cable inputs. So you can record an electric guitar straight in. You can record with the microphone, do an acoustic, do a vocal, however you guys wanted to work that out. However, the musician in your life is feeling for that comes with the mic stand, two cables. This one comes with a pop filter also. Um, so when you're recording your vocals, your P's and your T's, and as, it's it's going to, all your plosives is what we call them in the business. Uh, all the plosives don't come through and pop through the mic to cause that unwanted sound that you cannot clean up and post. Um, as much as people think they can, it's still there. Um, so that would be the beginner setup. Now, a more upgraded setup would be Honestly, stick with that bundle to start. So you have your interface, you have a microphone to start, you have your headphones, everything, you're, you're already good to go. But if you're looking to upgrade something, if you already have that bundle or if you have something like that, um, what I would do is honestly upgrade your microphone. The, the Focusrite microphone that comes with the bundle it's not a bad microphone. It picks up things very nicely, translates very clearly for things. Um, I don't have any problems with it, but there are some other options out there which aren't that expensive that can give even more clarity for things. Uh, one thing we've talked about before is in the studio here, we love the Aston mics uh, that we have. So we have the, I don't think you can see, I don't think it's in the shot, but we do have the Aston Spirit which we record pretty much all of our vocals through. Uh, we record a lot of acoustic guitar with that. It's everything just sounds great with that microphone, but that is the larger microphone that they have. They also have the Aston origin microphone. So it's a little shorter form. It's about this size. It's, it, it's a wide microphone just like Aston makes, but it's a great condenser microphone to start. Now they do say the way that it's built, all the ridges around it and all that stuff, it has a built-in pop filter. I still recommend using a pop filter with it. With my experience with the Spirit, you're going to need one anyway. Uh, so, But I would look into upgrading that microphone. That would be awesome. Now also on the upgraded side of things, I would also start to upgrade some cables. Now the cables that come with the bundle they're not terrible cables. They're, they're not going to sound like garbage or put a bunch of noise into your, your signal there. But as you begin to upgrade your cables, you can start to eliminate those possibilities in the long run with some other quality stuff. Some of the cables that I've really been uh, liking lately, and a lot of my cables here in the studio are, are the pig hog cables, which again, link down in the description. They're really affordable. 
but they're great quality too. Uh, and you can get uh, one, the link that I have down there, especially for XLR cables, you can get two 15 foot cables for $23 and they're really sturdy. They're very durable. It's, it's a great cable and uh, the guitar like instrument cables as well. They're perfect too. The 10 foot is like 16 bucks. Uh, so it's, Really, really affordable, and especially if, like I said, if you're looking to help upgrade uh, what they currently have their setup, that would be a great option to look into. Now, the third aspect of things is the advanced setup. So you have a musician in your life, you don't really know what to get for them, but they're starting to produce a lot of things, and you'd think that they could benefit from more capabilities, maybe more inputs, maybe a better microphone. Maybe they want to get some studio monitors and kind of set up a little space, whether it's in a bedroom, heck, people set up in a closet, wherever you want to set up. Chris Caraba, he recorded some of Dashboard Confessional songs in a closet with some like blankets and stuff around him, and it's great quality. So you don't have to go all out. But if you wanted to upgrade, what I would suggest is the Focusrite Scarlet 18i20. And that's actually what I have here in the studio. I love this thing. It gives me eight XLR or quarter inch inputs to where you can have multiple things. I've recorded full drum sets with this thing using the 2i2 along with it to get some room mics and some, you know, just far spatial sounds or a fat mic, something that's really punchy. Um, it, the, the Focusrite line, the preamps that are inside of these, they're so pristine. I really love them. Um, I, I can't speak any more highly of, of the Focusrite brand for things. So the 18i20 gives you all of that uh, with, like I said, eight inputs. You have control for everything. You've got monitor control. And that's another thing too, is the monitors. If they want to set up some studio monitors here in the studio, I have the PreSonus Aris uh, 4.5. So four and a half inch uh, subwoofer speakers. These things sound great and they're loud and they're not that expensive for the pair. It's like 150 bucks. And you can, I've been told to turn it down in here from time to time. And honestly, I didn't even think it was that loud. These speakers are great response, even without needing like a separate subwoofer in your studio for the low end. These things really represent some great low end presence with things, but you still get the really nice crisp highs so you can get the balance, get your mix, master things out, and it's going to work great. The other thing for the advanced setup, I would say, is possibly upgrade the microphone. Maybe look at that Aston Spirit mic. Maybe look into the Neumann line. There's some microphones for Neumann. You can get them down like $800. They're highly professional, sound amazing. Most people who sing through them are going to sound pretty good, even if they don't really sound pretty good. What I mean by that is it's going to record an exact representation of what you're performing. Um... There's tons of options out there, but like I said, the Aston microphones, I really, really highly recommend those. They're phenomenal. Also for the advanced setup, you could look into maybe some outboard gear. Um, so currently I have my uh, 18i20, but like I said earlier, I still have my 2i2. And what I've done is my 2i2, so my 2 interface to input interface. I have that the outs of that going into my 18 I 20. So into my larger interface. And with that, I'm running two tube preamps also. So the tube preamps work just like the tubes in the guitar amps, things of that nature, where you can start getting things a little warmer. You can get some saturation. You can really push those tubes. You can get distortion if you want distortion. But the Art Tube V3 preamps that I have, these things are cool because they have different settings that they have baked into it that they think sound good for appropriate things. Acoustic guitar, bass guitar, um, different voicings for those different types of instruments. You can also have it just on normal where you can really start tweaking with some things and get the sound that you want, have them achieve the sound that they're looking for. And those tube preamps 
really can just push things just a little bit to the next level and make things sound really great. The last thing we want to talk about is say they're all set up, say they're maxed out with gear. They, they can't house anything else in their setup. They, they don't have room for anything or they're not quite yet at the level that they want to record or, or they may want to, but they just, they don't have the opportunity or the space or, or anything of that nature. We got some stocking stuff or ideas just for the musician. And trust me, a lot of these are, are pretty basic when you think about it, but you still have to have some of these. Now, one thing that we would recommend as a stocking stuffer is some guitar picks. Uh, I've been using the Snarling Dog Brain Picks. Uh, it's a studio. You'd think I'd have one laying around here somewhere, but it's out of reach right now. But these picks, the top of them have like a, a texture on them that makes them a lot easier to hold. There's tons of different thicknesses for it. I get yelled at a lot because I use the 0.6 millimeter, which is very thin, um, but it's a purple pick. And if you can't tell from Floodwater, everything's purple. So I love the Snarling Dog Brain Picks. They are, like I said, easy to hold. Everything sounds great with those. Other things you could get are some strings. I know for acoustic players, I know a lot of acoustic players who enjoy elixir strings. They're coated, they're easy to move around on the fretboard, your fingers really slide on them and with those. Um, so that's a great option too. One thing I like for electric guitar strings is I use the Ernie Ball Slinkies and pretty much all of my electrics back there are all uh, set up with slinkies right now because honestly you can get a three pack of slinky strings for like 17 dollars so for me it's cost effective they sound great they last a while and they work i mean they're guitar strings people can get really picky about those but i'm just letting you know what works for me another thing that we wanted to mention is a simple tool, just a string winder, and it's got a cutter on the on the one side so you can trim up the strings after you restring your guitar. It's just easy to crank around and wind it up quickly instead of sitting there like this. You just spin it around, it winds really quick. Just a great little stocking stuffer to throw in there for, for one of your musicians, one of your guitar players in your life. Another thing that I really like is uh, just a simple cleaning kit. There is a cleaning kit by Dunlop that has a fretboard cleaner and a guitar polisher. Just a quick spray for that lemon oil for the neck, um, for the fretboard. It does a really great job cleaning up some dirt and grime, really just kind of bringing a new life to the instrument visually <clears throat> and just making that musician feel good that they have a pristine, clean instrument when they're playing. Really just, it, it's a little bit of a, a morale booster for things. And I clean mine often. I love those things. The last thing I do want to talk about for stocking stuff, where it's a little more expensive, but it's really fun to play with, is it's the Joyo Infinite Sustainer. Now, a lot of, I know a lot of people use the product called Ebo. Joyo has their own line of it where you turn it on, you kind of sit it on the strings, and it just, there's an LED light that vibrates the string and makes it sustain forever. You can just hold it there, but you can also move up and down the frets and make it kind of sound like that string sound. If you listen um, to our Christmas album, actually on Silent Night, I used my sustainer for uh, the, the lead line of Silent Night. So I'll put a link to that song up here if you guys wanna check that out. Um, but yeah, those are just some quick ideas for you. I really hope that you have enjoyed um, everything that we've been working on here at Floodwater. I hope that you have found something in this video that may work for the musician in your life. And I hope we've made the holidays a little bit easier for you when you're trying to think of ideas for them. If you guys have any questions or comments, throw them down in the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you know when we put up more content. And we thank you so much. Have a Merry Christmas, and we'll see you guys soon. <laughs> Bye.